Hi guys, so what we're going to talk about is different types of data transmission. So by data transmission, we're talking about the transfer of data between two devices, two computers, two phones, across the internet, um, one phone calling another phone, you talking to another person, a walkie-talkie, um, any means of communication. So um, well, the first thing we're going to talk about is data packets. And data packets, um, specifically is the um, unit of data that is transferred over the internet. So um, when any data is transferred through a network um, to different computers or over the internet, it's in the form of data packets. So we'll talk about data packets, then we'll go back to more general data transmission. So in a data packet, so a data packet is basically just a piece of data, um, ones and zeros really at its core. Um, and it consists of a packet header, a payload, and a trailer. And we'll go into what each of those are. So let's say that you want to send a photo, a picture by email from your computer to your friend's computer. Each of your computers has their own IP address that identifies them. So in the data packet, in um, this piece of data, one of many pieces of data that's being sent from your computer to your friend's computer, you're going to have the IP address for your computer in the header, the IP address of your friend's computer, the protocol, which is going to be the type of rule, well, the type of, not the type of data, but the set of rules that your data follows. In the case of email, it might be a specific protocol. In the case of the internet, it would just be TCP IP, or it could even be HTTP. Um, and then packet number. So when you send a piece of data, when you send an email or you send a photograph to your friend, um, that's going to be broken up into a bunch of different packets depending on how big um, that photograph or email is. And each of those will have a packet number um, because this will tell your friend's computer how to put all the packets back together to create a complete photograph or email. So basically whatever you're sending is going to be broken up into a number of data packets, each with a packet number. And these will be put back together when they are received at your friend's computer. Um, and then, so the first part of the data packet is going to be the header. The next part is going to be data, which is actually going to be a piece of that photograph or of that email. So it's going to be a piece of the data that you actually want to send. The header is kind of like instructions on what to do. The data is the actual data. And then the trailer is something that's going to be used to um, show that the end of the packet has been searched to show that we've reached the end of the packet, but it's also going to have some data to help us figure out whether there was an error um, while the data was transmitted or not. And we'll get to that in a separate unit. So this is just like another representation, packet header, return address, destination address, also sequence number, which is the same thing as the packet number. Um, and then we've got error checking in our, um, in our trailer and then data and our payload. Um, so again, we just kind of went over what these are, just packet header, packet number, um, you know, just the idea that when you send a file or, or text that's split into multiple data packets, each one of which has a packet number, um, payload, trailer, and some review questions right here. So before we, move, before we move on, just make sure you can answer these basic questions. Uh, the last one, why does data need to be broken down into packets to be transmitted? Um, that's mainly because it's, it's quite large and needs to be broken up into separate pieces depending on the network in order to be transmitted quickly and efficiently. So packet switching is how we transmit data packets in a network like the internet or like a Wi-Fi network. So let's say that you want to send some text, okay? Um, you want to send an essay to your friend. That's going to be broken up into, we'll say, that could be broken up into four data packets. So one, two, three, and four. Um, it could be broken up into more data packets. This is just an example, okay? Um, and each of these will have a, um, a header, payload, and a trailer. So. Your device might be your computer. And so device A might be your computer and device B, device B might be your friend's computer. In any network, including the internet, 
Um, between any two computers, there are a number of routers. And these routers just help guide data packets um, to the correct destination. So essentially, you can't really see this, but what they do is they read the destination address in each data packet. And, they, and then based on the destination pad, um, address, um, they send the data packet down the correct path. But in this network, which could just be the internet, or it could be the um, internet, well, it's, it could be the internet um, with certain routers or certain hubs that are part of the internet between you and your friend. Um, each of these data packets might take a different path. So data packet one might go from here, might go from router one to router two, and then to your friend. Um, data packet two might go from you to router one, to router four, to router five, and then to your friend. Um, router Router three might go this way, right, this way, this way, and then to your friend. And router four might take a different path. To go like this. These paths depend on how much traffic there is in the network. Um, and they kind of de they kind of depend on, well, it, mainly it's traffic, and then more specifically traffic's, traffic on different routes to your friend's device. Um, and the thing is, they might all get there at different times, which is why packet numbers are so important. Um, so that the device B right here knows what order, in what order all these packets need to be put together um, in order for um, your message to be correctly reassembled and um, for you to be able to read that message, that text, once you've received it. Um, OK, so those data packets kind of apply more to networks and the internet. Um, now we're going to talk about basic data transmission um, between any two devices, either on the internet or outside. Um, there are four types of data transmission, or five types, rather. So the first two, uh, serial and parallel, um, involve the number of wires used to transmit data. And the um, last three, simplex, half duplex, and full duplex, involve the direction of data flow. Um, so the first one is serial data transmission. So serial data transmission um, is between device A and device B, like all the others. But here, data is only transmitted using a single wire. Um, and each piece of data, each bit of data, so each one and zero of that data, is transmitted one at a time. So as a result, there are a few advantages to this. Um, the first is that it will arrive in the correct order. Okay, so it won't arrive. So different pieces of data won't arrive in d at different times, which means that it's easy to put the data back together. Um, second of all, so we could also say that you know, um, in order. Next, there's less of a chance of interference. So if there are many wires, they might interfere. They might interfere with each other. But if there's only one wire, there's nothing to interfere with that wire less interference. And also because you're using one wire, it's cheaper. On the other hand, the downside is that because you're only using one wire, it's slower. Okay, so now we've got data, parallel data transmission. Um, parallel data transmission is different in, in the sense that it's using multiple wires. Um, so multiple bits of data are being transmitted at the same time. So there are a few advantages. One is that it's faster. Um, and oftentimes, it's just more, um, not necessarily efficient, but more practical to use, because most computers and devices already use pa uh, parallel data transmission internally. Um, so if you are trying to install it, if you're trying to add a, comp a component to a computer, you'd want it to use parallel data transmission. Um, a disadvantage is that data could be skewed. So multiple, so multiple bits are being sent at the same time. Um, and those bits, because of that, those bits may not necessarily arrive in order. So they need to be reordered after transmission. Um, they could be put together in the wrong order, or they could be skewed. And this is a big risk with multiple, well, parallel data transmission in particular, but not serial data transmission. Um, there's more a chance of interference. Um, because of the fact that there are multiple wires that could interfere with each other. And because you're using more wires, 
you're using more than one wire, uh, it's more expensive. Okay, so we've got a question here. Um, a marketing company prints leaflets to deliver to people's houses. Leaflets are designed on a computer and sent to a large printer that is three meters away. Large number of leaflets need to be printed in a short period of time to make sure they're ready for delivery. Would you use serial or parallel data transmission um, to connect the computer to the printer? Why would you, use this, why would you choose this type of cable? Um, so, okay, large number of, of leaflets need to be printed in a short period of time. Means that you need to transfer a lot of information really quickly. So that kind of already means parallel, right? Um, also, it's a short distance, not a long distance. Um, so we can use parallel as well. Um, we use serial for long distance because there's less of a chance of interference. Um, also, if you're printing something, you're probably transferring image data, which is quite a lot of data, which may be better for parallel as well. Um, lots of data. But really, really, it's just faster. You could use serial, but parallel would be faster. Okay, so now we're getting into direction rather than the number of wires. So first with serial data transmission, data is only transmitted in one direction. Quite simple, device A to device B. Um, in half duplex data transmission, um, hold on a sec. Um, okay, right here, you can't really see it, but, and I should have probably done a better job with this, but two uses of, hold on a sec. Uh, did I hit my son? Okay, so right here we've got half duplex data transmission. So basically in half duplex data transmission, data is being transmitted in both directions, but it can only be transmitted in one direction at a time, only one direction at a time. So this is actually used for Wi-Fi, um, but another example would also be walkie-talkies, right? So usually you need to, you need to say something you need to indicate to the end of your message and then wait for the other person to talk. You can't really talk at the same time in walkie-talkies. So that's a good example of half duplex data transmission. So right here, if you look at this example right here, um, we, can transmit data, we can transmit data from device A to device B, um, but at that time at which data is being transmitted from device A to device B, we can't transmit from device B to device A. And the same, and the converse is true as well. So both directions, but only one direction at a time. Uh, next, we've got full duplex data transmission, which means that we can transmit in both directions at the same time. And um, again, I wrote some examples right here, but the font's kind of messed up. So some examples, this would be cell phones, where, for example, you could, inter you could interrupt each other in a cell phone. You can kind of have a conversation, um, unlike with a walkie-talkie, where it's a little bit more stilted. And then wired Ethernet. So actual Ethernet cords um, that are used to connect networks or or, um, or in the case when you connect to the internet using an ethernet cord, you connect direct, directly to the modem. Um, this is one of the reasons why full duplex data transmission is more reliable and faster than Wi-Fi. Or sorry, not specifically full, data, full duplex data transmission, but using a wired ethernet connection is a faster way to access the internet than Wi-Fi. So we got a few questions right here. Um, which method of data transmission sends data along a single wire? That one's got serial, multiple bits at a time, parallel. Um, if data transmission, or if a, a data transmission connection sends data one bit at a time in both directions, but not at the same time, that's gonna be half duplex. Um, two advantages of serial data transmission, faster, uh, less interference. Uh, two disadvantages of parallel data transmission, interference, uh, data could be skewed. And a business manager transmits data about its customers to a central file server. The file server is 100 meters away. They need to be able to receive, send and receive customer data to and from the server at the same time. The accuracy of the customer's data is imperative. Which methods of data transmission should be used? Um, okay, so now we're getting to an interesting point right here. Um, what we can do also is we can um, combine um, our two types of data transmission. So we had one type of data transmission that focused on um, the direction, and we had another type that focused on a single wire, or focused on the number of wires. So we need to, tr we need to transfer over a long distance that needs to be reliable without interference. Um, so we know it's gonna be serial, but um, we also um, need to be able to send and receive customer data to and from the server at the same time. So we're gonna say it's gonna be serial full duplex. 
full duplex. All right, which is a possibility. We can have parallel full duplex, serial full duplex, serial half duplex, parallel half duplex, um, serial simplex, parallel simplex. Those are all possibilities. <clears throat> so basically combining those types to get the most efficient uh, data connection for whatever tasks we're trying to complete. Now here we're going to talk about USB or universal serial bus. Um, so you've probably heard of USB before used to connect devices to your computer. Um, USB uses a um, special type of serial data transmission that can transmit data at very high speeds. Um, there are a few advantages to USB. Oh, by the way, USB stands for um, universal serial bus. Um, so there are a few advantages. One, it has a very simple interface, so it's quite easy to connect USB devices to computers. Um, the speed is relatively high, so it's fast. Um, again, universal. Um, a computer can pretty much immediately recognize a USB device that's connected. And USB connections can also be used to power devices, so they don't need another power source like a battery. Um, the disadvantages are, like the, are that the length of a USB cable is limited to 5 meters and that it's fast, but not as fast as, for example, Ethernet. So USB stands for Universal Serial Bus, as we saw before. It uses serial data transmission. Two advantages are that it is fast, um, and computers recognize it, and you can power USB devices, which is actually three. Five devices that could be connected. I mean, lots of things, phones, USB drives. Um, webcams, um, probably I think you can even connect, uh, you can connect Wi-Fi transmitters. Um, you can connect things like fans. I think you can connect toaster. Um, what is the length of USB cable limited to? Uh, five meters. It's limited to this length um, because any bigger than this and the USB signal loses its strength. All right, so let's take a look at some IGCSE questions. So five statements about serial half duplex data transmission are shown in the table below. Uh, tick to show that each statement is true or false. So serial half duplex. Remember serial is one wire and half duplex is two directions, but only one direction at a time. So data is transmitted in one direction only, one bit at a time. This one is false because it's half duplex. Data is transmitted in both directions, multiple bits at a time. False. Can't be transmitted at the same time. It's also not multiple bits because it's serial. Data is transmitted in one direction only, multiple bits at a time. False. Not neither one direction nor multiple bits at a time. Data is transmitted in both directions, but only one direction at a time. Data is transmitted one bit at a time. True. This one, this one right here is for a half duplex. And data is transmitted one bit at a time because it's serial. Uh, data is transmitted in both directions, but only one direction at a time. Data is transmitted multiple bits at a time. False. Data is transmitted only one bit at a time. Next, right here, we've got three. We've got three descriptions of data transmission given below. Tick the appropriate box in each table to show the type of transmission and the method of transmission. Data is transmitted several bits at a time down several wires in both directions simultaneously. Both directions simultaneously means full duplex. Um, several bits at a time means parallel. One bit at a time means serial. Data is transmitted in one direction only, one bit at a time down a single wire. So one direction only means simplex. Uh, one bit at a time means serial. Data is transmitted one bit at a time down a single wire. So one bit at a time down a single wire means serial. The data is transmitted in both directions, but not at the same time. That means half duplex. Okay, a computer in a factory is connected to a printer. The printer is located in an office one kilometer away from the factory. Identify which data transmission would be most suitable for this connection. Um, so that's gonna be simplex. Sorry, not simplex, rather that'd be serial. Um, so there are two reasons for this choice. One, distance. Um, so serial works, serial works better over long distances because there's less interference. Uh, 
Um, I would also, I would say that, may, you know, the second uh, reason that I would choose cereal um, would probably be the fact that um, I know that it'll be more liable. Well, okay, but actually, dis well, all right. This one, less interference does actually mean more liable, so that's not really a good answer. Um, I guess it'd also be cheaper, right, to use a serial cable. Um, it takes less wire, and you need you need a connection that's one kilometer long, which is going to be a lot of wire if it's parallel, so it's cheaper as well. That's why I'd use this data transmission method. One kilometer is a long way. Parallel could be expensive. Also with serial, um, distance, we could say it's more reliable over the distance because there's less interference um, and also less chance of skewing. Of skewing. So all the data will arrive in the correct order. Okay, this question, give two reasons why serial transmission rather than parallel transmission is used to connect devices to a computer. Um, one reason might be that it is uh, more reliable, so there's less chance of interference. Um, another may be that there's less chance of skewing. 